good good morning good afternoon good day whatever time of day it is welcome to sunday school with auntie pay and i'm auntie pay so this morning we're moving away from parables that we would have been talking about for the past couple of weeks we did 11 parables all right and remember we talked about parables being earthly stories with a heavenly meaning so Jesus would have told stories to give us an idea of what to do and what not to do and how to act and how to basically inherit the kingdom of heaven. So now we move back over into some books of the Bible. So today we're going, or for the next couple of weeks, we're going to discover about the Psalms. So the books of Psalms. So the book of Psalms is a really interesting book because of what exactly it is. It doesn't read like any other book in the bible because it is well you'll just see all right you'll see some fun facts about the psalms so the book of psalms is the longest book in the bible there's the longest book by the amount of verses verses there are not the amount of words there are so the book of psalm consists of 2527 verses there are 150 psalms in that book um it is divided into five parts um psalm 1 to 41 then psalm 42 to 72 then 73 to 89 90 to 106 and 107 to 150. now the third thing about psalm is that you can find it in two known places in the anglican um bit so one you can find it in the bible so you can find it in our, whatever you call this book. I call it the liturgy. It is also the book of common prayer. It is also the red book. However you want to refer to it, it's the red book, the liturgy. But the proper name of it is the book of common prayer. All right. So you, there's a hole in the back of the book. There is all the Psalms from Psalm 1 to 150. Okay. Good. So now liturgies, you can find the Psalm. You can find the Psalm in the Bible. You can also find the psalm on Google, um, whether you use the search, Google, I don't know, what else is there? <laughs> Bing, the search rate. So psalms were written to be sung. So we know now that psalms are songs, all right? And it's original language of Hebrew. Um, they have a nice little rhythm, just like, I don't know, soccer. Um, it just depends. Over the years, though, the Psalms have inspired persons, many artists, to sing and boldly proclaim the glory of God. Because that is what the Psalms are about. Just singing about the glory of God and singing about anything that you need in your time, whatever time you are in. Whether it's a time of rejoicing, whether it's a time of fear, whatever it's a time of sorrow, there is a Psalm for you. Okay? Um, so this is Psalm 106, verse 1 which says, Alleluia, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his mercy endures forever. So that is Psalm 106 verse 1. So uh, um, this band was inspired by that verse to sing a short clip of what 106 is. All right? <laughs> Thanks to the Lord, for He is good for His 
All right, so that was Psalm 106, verse 1, which says, Hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endures forever. So hallelujah is the same as saying praise, praise, praise the Lord, all right? So where else can we find Psalms? We can find Psalms on YouTube. So we use YouTube to find any song that we could possibly think of. Um, even if you Google do 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 do, I'm sure that you can find a song. <laughs> All right, so we can find Psalms on YouTube. Um, we can find the actual person singing it in he Hebrew. We can find persons who were inspired by the Psalms to sing it. Um, our opening song this morning was "Be Still" by Travis Green, which is Psalm 46. Okay, so he was inspired by Psalm 46 to write that song. Um, then we have Psalm 34, Otis and see the, what the Lord has done for us by the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Um, and one of my personal favorites, which is Psalm 23, sung by Buju Banton featuring Morgan Heritage. You can search that up on YouTube and it's the actual Psalm 23 just sung in such a lovely melody. All right, so again, you can find these psalms on YouTube. You can find them in rap. You can find them in R&B. You can find them in country. You can find them in blues. You can find them in any possible genre you can think of. I'm sure that there is a YouTube um, version song for it. So the psalms are still relevant today for us. Just probably sung in different ways. Half the book of psalms were written by King David. So King David is that same David from the Bible with the little slingshot, David and Goliath. So some background story on King David. Before he became a king, he was a shepherd. And as a shepherd, you had to be really strong because you had to fight off any lions that come for your sheep, any wolves that come for your sheep. You have to go searching and walking miles upon miles upon miles for, um, to look for the best patch of grass for your hood, all right? Um, just like in our parables. Remember in our parables, we lost a sheep and out of the 99, out of a hundred sheep, they lost one and the shepherd still went and looked for the one even though he had 99 sheep. It's the same reason with um, King David. He wrote the 23rd Psalm as a way to reflect from his experience of being a shepherd before he became a king. He was also a musician for King Saul, all right? So that's why we say that it's meant to be sung because a musician made it and he made it to sing to King Saul to calm Saul's spirit and calm Saul's um, quote-unquote madness, all right? So that's why we have the Book of Psalms reading and being sung the way they are because that's what they are, songs. The Psalms took 1,000 years to be composed. So between the years of 1400 BC, BC means before Christ, and 400 BC, the Psalms were written and composed. So it took that long for the, this one book of 150 Psalms to be written. Now, to go back a little bit where I said the Psalms are about what was happening then. Just like now, we're, as we're all on lockdown and we're all locked inside and safe at home, safe at home all right we talk about we heard a lot of songs talking about being locked down um being inside how we don't want to be inside anymore we want to break free um some of the things that we miss we talked about the new normal we've heard songs about this it's the same way with the psalms at that time if you were in turmoil persons talked about it they wrote about it they sung about it if there was something that joyous happened, they wrote about it. If they were sad, they wrote about it. If they needed help, they wrote about it. If they think they needed God a little more, they wrote about it. So that's why it took so long to write just 50, 150 Psalms, okay? The most retweeted, shared, um, I don't know what you call it on Instagram. I'm feeling old. <laughs> Whatever you do on Instagram um, is Psalm 23. So the most retweeted and shared Psalm is Psalm 23, which is the Lord is my shepherd Psalm, okay? Uh, everybody around the world, no matter what, I'm sure that they, 
in some way or fashion or form have recognized Psalm 123 and for what it is. Okay. Interesting fun fact. I did not know this until I did the research. Psalm 118, 118 verse 8 is at the very center of the Bible. So Psalm is located at the very dead center of the Bible. This is the 66 books. This is not when you include the Apocrypha. So this is the 66 books. Um, so there are 594 chapters in the Bible before Psalm 118, and there are 594 chapters after 118, okay? So that was interesting for me to know. And Psalm 118, and God works in such a fun way. Psalm 118, verse 8 says, let me just pull out my book of common prayer. Um, right, it says, verse 8. So Psalm 118, verse 8 says, It is better to rely on the Lord than put your trust in flesh. Or, well, in some version, you have put your trust in man. So that's what the Bible calls us to do. Not put our trust in mankind, but put our trust and faith in God. So you see how God works funny and in a nice, mysterious way. Today's psalm that we're going to be talking about is Psalm 46, verse 10. So Psalm 46, verse 10 is a psalm that teaches us about patience and just being patient. So Psalm 46 reads from our Book of Common Prayer, page 527. God is our God and God is our God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth may be moved and though the mountains may be toppled into the depths of the sea, though the waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is the, in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of God. What awesome things he has done on the earth. It is he who makes the war cease in the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shield with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among all nations and I will be exalted among the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. So this is what Psalm 46 tells us. And it's just a psalm about waiting and waiting to see what God has done for us. Waiting to see all the good things because this is a God our, we know at this point God is our strength and our refuge. We know this. And we know that whatever plans God has for us, all we have to do is wait. And sometimes we get impatient. I know. Sometimes we get impatient. Sometimes we want things to happen now. Sometimes things need to happen now for us to be excited and want it. But that's not how God works. God doesn't work on our time. We work on God's time. <laughs> all right. And... God just calls us and reminds us that we have to wait on him and wait on his works. So I want you all, it is crap time. I want you all right now for me to pick out these items. So just get these items. I'll give you two minutes to get these items. So it's a small jar or container, jar, container, anything with a lid basically. Um, a ribbon or twine. So I have twine. All right, pens, markers, glue, scissors, pens, markers, glue. If you don't have twine, the glue will work for you. All right, scissors and colored paper. If you don't have colored paper, that's fine. White paper will work and you will just have to color. Oh, paper fell. You just have to color your sheets. So what I want you to do for me first is to make some small burger fold to me. So we go one burger fold, two burger fold, three burger folds, 
four burger foods till you get to the end of your paper. So you're making 12 of these. So if you need another page, I would suggest you get another page because you need 12. So on each fold, so I don't know if you can see the crease. So each fold, I want you to write about something that you've been praying about. You don't have to tell me, you don't have to tell an adult. Um, you just write about something that you're praying for and you've been waiting for. Okay, anything that you've been waiting on and you think you need to be patient on or anything that you think God forgets you with. Really, actually, God don't forget, but anything you think God forgets. All right. Anything that you think you need patience with. So like I'm writing patience with my siblings because I do have a lot, I have six siblings. <laughs> All right. Um, I need help in work. Anything that you need, okay? Anything that you can think of that you can possibly need um, to wait on God, all right? When you finish, take your scissors and cut it out for me. Cut them out in strips. Cut along the crease. So you get 12 sheets of paper. Okay, if you need adult assistance, get an adult. Please, please, please don't work scissors. If you are there, don't work your scissors. Get an adult. <laughs> All right, so you would have 12 sheets of paper with something written on it. All right, let's go there. Patience with my siblings. All right, good. So I want you to fold them in some hot dog folds. So you get them really small, or just medium size, and crease. Okay. Now you're placing them in your jars. So you place your 12 sheets, or if you have more things you're praying to God about, that's fine. I just said 12. And you put them in your jar for me. Close your jar. If you don't have yarn, this is for you. So what I want you to do now is make a label for me. So that leftover paper that you have, if you have, you get a piece of paper that is the size of your lid so that you can cover your lid. Okay, that's big enough. And on that you're writing Psalm, so it's in the picture, Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And you're taking the glue and you're sticking it on the top of your lid. All right? So you're sticking it on the top of your lid as a reminder that this is your be still jar. Okay? Good. Then we have, for the persons who have the yarn or tread, what you're going to do is punch a hole in the front, on the top of the label that you would have made. And... If you don't have a hole punch, you can just use a scissors and punch a little hole and thread your yarn into the hole. So you have a label here. It could be yarn, it could be string, it could be a ribbon. It's up to you. Okay? So now we take our container, get an adult assistant, and you tie your label around the jar. Tie it tight so that it wouldn't slip off or slip down. And this is just a gentle reminder that these are the things that you are waiting on God for. And anytime you get a little impatient, anytime you get a little bit like, oh my gosh, like God forget me. I really need this in know God. Anytime you're feeling a little weird, uh, just remember that you made these and just shake it up because this is just a gentle reminder that God calls us to be patient and know that he is God and he's your refuge, he's your strength, okay? So when every time you get a little feeling weird, feeling like God forget me, oh my gosh, I've been praying, I want you to take your jar, hold it tight and shake it up. and Just be like, I will still, I will be still and wait for you. So it is just a nice little reminder that God calls us to be still and know that I am God. All right? 
And that is our psalm for today. These have been the psalm that we... Okay. Right. So this has been our psalm for today. Psalm 46. And I, I encourage you, encourage you, to all these little crafts that we've been making, all the um, reminder, all the Bible verses that we've been talking about. If you have a little space where you can keep these things, a sacred space in your rooms, in your houses, any, any point really, just to have all these reminders that God is for you and nobody could be against you, all right? And today's Psalm calls us to just be patient and have patience. Just like as we are in COVID-19 right now and we in Trinidad and Tobago are on lockdown, it is just calling us to be patient. Be patient. This is just about us being safe. So be patient and wait and wait on God. All right? So I want you all, I have a surprise for you all. So this week we have a surprise coming out, basically. It is a surprise for all young persons of the Anglican diocese, wherever you are in the world, you can join in. So just stay close to the Anglican Outlook this week. You will see a special treat for Sunday schoolers, for um, young adults, basically for anybody who is interested in learning a little bit about more, more about God this vacation. Hint, hint. All right, so look out for that exciting news releasing this week about Sunday school with Auntie Pete. So this has been Sunday School with Auntie Pei. I'm Auntie Pei. See you next week. Bye.